Winnie de Vero is part of the fourth generation on a dude ranch in Gre Greeno, Montana. She says, it's like city, slicker, city slickers meets dirty dancing meets the horse whisperer with a river runs through it and some Downton Abbey mixed in. <laughs> That's what she said. Please welcome Juanita Vero. Thank you. I live uh, uh, near the Clearwater and Blackfoot uh, confluence. Sorry, Sarah. Um, that spirish rock is apparently described in Meriwether Lewis's journals uh, after he split from Clark at Traveler's Rest. Um, you know the story. Uh, Clark heads up the Bitterroot, Lewis heads down the Bitterroot, crosses the Clark Fork, and then heads up the Blackfoot. July 3rd, 1806. A uh, hundred years later, my great-grandparents purchased land near the confluence of the Blackfoot and Clearwater about a year before that 1907 steel bridge was built. How many of you guys know that bridge? Yeah! Um, and uh, they created a guest ranch. And by 1925, it was up and running properly. And this is the same time period that Norman McLean writes about in A River Runs Through It. But as a kid, the Blackfoot was just the big river. Rough water you could drown in and water you couldn't drink. Uh, my little brother and I were always being reprimanded uh, about safety, not so much because our parents loved us or cared about us, but more because bad kids were unsafe and somehow misfortune and accidents were the victim's fault and more importantly, they were a nuisance to the parents. So my brother and I, we, we got the, the drowning thing figured out, that's pretty obvious. And uh, I knew no matter how thirsty I was, never to drink the water. Because I mean, I'd spent many a river crossing behind a horse shitting in the water with its anus blossoming out the last bits. The turds floating mercilessly towards me and my mount. There was no way I was going to drink that stuff. <laughs> One winter, one winter, the neighbor ranch had some cows fall through the ice, and their black Angus carcasses piled up in the ice jam for weeks, months actually, and then it wasn't until spring runoff when the bodies floated downstream and disappeared. And that summer, at the swimming hole, the boulders were covered in this thick, curly mats of moss that looked and felt like cowhide. I was very careful to swim around them. Even now, I don't touch those rocks. <laughs> so I'm, I'm seven years old, and I'm crossing the Blackfoot uh, at Swallow Cliffs, just above the Swallow Cliffs Rapids. I'm on Cura. He's a swayback, bald-faced, red roan Arab. And I'm, I'm following my dad, who's here in the audience, over here somewhere. I'm following my dad, who's leading a group of dudes across the river. And uh, I'm feeling really confident bringing up the rear, because now I've, I've been riding on my own, well, off the lead line for two whole summers. And I'm bringing up the rear, because I've got to watch these dudes. Watch those dudes, my grandfather and mother's voices in my head. They don't know anything, as, as if it's their fault. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty humorless, no-nonsense kid, like drama, incompetence, frivolity. Like, those aren't... Um, things that are welcomed in my family. And uh, so I'm taking this really seriously, bringing up the rear. But looking back now, I realize that I'm bringing up the rear because my horse is slow and my 18 inch long legs aren't very effective. <laughs> so me and Kira, we're heading across the river, we're about halfway, and he stops. And I think it's to poop. And uh, dad's across the river, there's four dudes between us, and uh, then I realize it's, he's not going to poop. He's going to shake like a dog. And uh, at this point in my riding career, this is the most common way for me to fall off. It's not till the next summer that my horses spook violently, run away, buck, and I hit the ground every day of my eighth summer. But right now, I'm seven, um, I'm 
I know with chilling certainty that I am going in that water. And this is a fear that I've always had, like in the back of my head, and I can't believe it's actually happening. Like, I'm incredulous. This is really happening. Your worst nightmare in the river. So now I'm in the river, and the first thought is, don't drink the water. There's so much poop in here. <laughs> and then I realize I'm really in the river, and I can't really figure out how to swim with my cowboy hat all wrapped around my neck by a stampede string. My boots are filling up with water. My jeans are all like heavy and wet around my legs. And just this whole situation doesn't feel anything at all like being in the Grizz pool for swim lessons. <laughs> I'm like, is, is, is this how people drown? And uh, I remember one of my dad's life maxims is, if you're ever in a stressful state, relax. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to relax. So I kept up my face down float, and vaguely wondered what was going to happen next as I approached the rapids. And uh, of course, by that time, my dad has turned his horse around and come running back into the river and has gotten off and swim, float, ran, waded out to me and somehow got me out of the river. We're up on the bank, and I'm back on Kira, sopping wet. And we're riding along, and then he, he turns around and he asks me, why didn't you swim? Why didn't you attempt a stroke? <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, because you said in an emergency, don't panic, relax. <laughs> and the truth is, is that I am deeply ashamed and embarrassed that I've come off my horse in the river, no less. And, and then this other thing going on where I feel like the dudes are judging me. And I'm like, I don't need their pity. I, I don't need their concern. I'm not some pale, sunscreen, bubble-wrapped, whiny kid. And, and there's this, like, their kids, you know? So, uh, <laughs> There's this other thing going on, though, is that, 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 that judgment. And I suddenly think that they're judging my dad's parenting chops. And I feel the need to defend him and the decision to ride across a river with a seven-year-old lagging way behind on an old horse that feels itchy and is compelled to do full body shakes. <laughs> and so I got I to gotta be tough, and I got to be chatty and put on a good face and reassure these highfalutin dudes that my family's not a total junk show. And so I, I reach for the only thing that I know about the Blackfoot besides drowning and poop, and, and that's fish, because well-heeled folks are always boasting about fish. And so I'm like, I saw fish. I lie. Big trout. Um, so our, our family, our, the, the guest ranch operation has been around for over 90 years now, and the ranch family is a delightful junk show. But whenever I cross at Swallow Cliffs, I make sure the weakest rider is right behind me. Thanks. <laughs>